this week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we're going to get retro with the Princess Bride and Willow. Oh, nice. Um, moved offices. This sounds like something that I used to have to do. Uh, yeah, it's super boring, but uh, Alexa didn't help me with that. Uh, I can imagine not. She's helping me out quite a bit, though. Um, but she couldn't help me troubleshoot my audio setup from last week. Well, the only thing that matters this week for me is that I got a tap handle for my birthday. Well, like, I mean, I, I would have tied that in something with changing offices, but whatever. We'll, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, cheers. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 221 for Thursday, the 25th of July, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and man, we are coming up on five years of this damn show. That's crazy, man. Is it, um, is it August 3rd, I think, is when we recorded the first Alpha episode? That, probably, that sounds right. Yeah. It's like, five years, man, that's sure it's not longer <laughs> look five years is long enough staring at your face every week all right <laughs> well we didn't always have video <laughs> <laughs> those were the days <laughs> oh my god hey, hey dude um so i mentioned pre-show that i am not drinking beer this week there's two reasons for that one i really didn't feel like fucking with the phone because i still haven't finished the keg because it's just been so goddamn busy and Ooh. two because as soon as we are done here I have an overnight turn of an edit of Talking Feds, Mm. and that edit includes the guest who hosted the recording, by the way, of Rob Reiner. Yes, that Rob Reiner. Princess Bride, When Harry Met Sally, uh, Stand By Me. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, he's our special guest on Talking Feds this week. That's coming out tomorrow, which means I have a lot of fucking work to do tonight. So I am, um, I'm tapping into the uh, Mountain Dew Ale. Uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna say it sounds like more of a coffee night than a beer night mm. for you, um, man. So t- speaking of 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 taps, though, and I, I talked about this a, a little bit in the lead up to the show. Uh, I got a belated birthday present today. Um, I got a, a, a personalized tap handle for my kegerator, which um, kind of means I need to like stop fucking around and actually brew some beer. Well, well, first of all, this tap handle has the quite possibly the most awkward uh, uh, picture of you on <laughs> on, on the wood. Um, yeah, but uh, it, and it says Kent's Brew, which. Kind of, it's. I mean, I don't want to call anybody out. I don't know who gave this to you. I can, I can assume who it was, but, um, I, I think they're trying to kick you in the junk and tell you to get your shit started, dude. Yep, yep. That's exactly what it is. So, um, yeah. So look forward to updates on that in the <laughs> nearest future. Um, and a quick update on my long-standing need to mail a package to the Have a Drink folks. It is officially boxed up. It's not mailed off yet because the box I had. It's boxed within boxes, you know, because there's glasses and stuff in there. So they're, I kind of right. kept them separated for to try to make sure they they made it. You might win the race. Yeah, might, it's not in a box yet. Even the 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 big box I chose to put all the small boxes in was one box too small for the boxes. So I'm having to split it up in between two shipments, which is probably gonna work out better anyway. Um, but it is it is boxed up. It's ready to go. I I just really got to put tape on it and take it to UPS. Yeah, well, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna win this one. I'm, I'm uh, I might. I don't know. I might. Like, speaking of like unassing my my whatever my laziness in doing <laughs> things. I mean, maybe maybe I might get some inspiration. And actually, go to the mailbox. If I can't make one, I'll send one to people that deserve it. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, all right, dude. Uh, I uh, prime week started and prime week is the week in which you receive all the shit you ordered on prime day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I now have a, a, an Amazon. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go through the, the quick list. Of, this is kind of what I've been doing this week in my spare time, which is why mm-hmm. none of the shit I need to get done has gotten done. Um, I have the echo show five here at my desk. Mm-hmm. I have the echo show 10, 
which is just an Echo Show, I guess, second generation. Which it, is, yeah, which is an older version than the 5. It, yes, but it's still the same generation. Because it's, sure. it's still the second gen. But anyway, uh, that's in the kitchen. And then I have two Echo Pros and an Echo Sub in the study room slash upstairs living room. And by the way, they sound great. That is a hell of a sound system. It's I know it's a little expensive, but it's pretty fucking awesome. And I have the third gen Echo downstairs in the living room and a third gen Echo upstairs in my bedroom. I have three Echo Dots that are still on the way. They haven't received. I, I just got notification today that they are delayed because apparently they sold the hell out when they were selling them for half price. Imagine that. Right. And um, my ring doorbell came in, and I don't need the ring system for it, so it's it's standalone as of right now, and it's working awesome. Little video doorbell. It, it integrates quite well with the Echo Show. It does. It does, actually. And I, I was afraid that I would have to have the, the ring system with the ring hub, you know? Uh, um, yep. but, but no, that, yep. that may enhance uh, its abilities, but it is not required, so it's just connected to Wi-Fi right now, which was another issue because the Napier Orbi doesn't like to spit out a five gigahertz signal without a two or a two point four gig without the five gig overriding it, which is really irritating. But I found found a workaround that didn't involve me SSHing into the fucking Orbi, which is awesome. Oh, this, um, this sounds like a um, uh, Nosilicast. Uh, <laughs> top. Yeah, that was actually part of my inspiration. I thought about uh, creating a new Wi-Fi just for the the stuff in the house, and I was like, well, we've already got enough Wi-Fi signals and shit in here. We don't need to be adding anything. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's all in progress. It's it's working pretty well, and renaming everything to where you can actually call people from different rooms and shit. It's pretty awesome. Um, I, I was going to uh, invite you to be able to c- drop in on my Echo Show here in the office, but uh, the. My internal processes, my internal privacy processes were like, well, I can cover the camera so it's not like they can drop in anyway. But it, it, anyway, it, it it felt a little awkward without saying, hey, dude, uh, let's let's hook up our show so we can talk about how well that works together with, uh, you know, and just doing it without saying that first. So uh, this is my official notification. You're going to get an invite to drop in on my office show. <laughs> All right. You're just going to have to remember to remove that permission because I might like, huh, what or what? What's happening in Amos's office right now? Well, uh, and, and that's part and of on Amos's office. Yeah. Oh no! Oh God! No! <laughs> well, first of all, the, the the Echo Show Five has a built-in uh, camera cover, so that's right. there. Uh, yeah. And the, second of all, it actually rings like a phone call. Like you can you can do it, but it notifies that that you're well, doing it. Well, it it does, um, but you can you can set it so that it either uh, like automatically picks up or like requires a a, a permission. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like the the little slider that covers the camera does mm-hmm. not cover the microphone. <laughs> no, no, it, <laughs> it certainly does not. That that'd be rather in uh, intrusive for a voice activated device, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but it does have the button. Like you can you can turn off the microphone. Yes. There is a button that will turn off the camera and the microphone. Yes. If you trust the software, uh, the button activated software, which I clearly. Don't, but I also don't care. So, <laughs> so basically, it's probably still listening. It's just not accepting commands. Is probably what it is. Yeah, yeah. You, you, all all your words are still going to Russia. So whatever. Mm. Let's not forget China. Um, I mean, China and Russia are kind of the same, aren't they? They're like nestled in. They're like they're like bed buddies on the same continent. They're like they're 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 spooning each I mean, other. So I mean, I think they high five if nothing else. I mean, uh, look. High five, reach round, whatever. I mean, you call it what you want. A <laughs> low five. I, I don't know that I'd, I would have a preference like, oh, well, this is going to China. That's fine as long as it's not going to Russia. I, you right. know, it's. <laughs> I'm not so sure I'd want my stuff going to anywhere in the United States. I mean, let alone another country. Uh, I mean, whatever. It all goes to India, to be honest. But <laughs> I mean, it just routes through India, I think. No, well, I mean, it, it, it goes to India because that's how they use it to. Anyway, that's that's. It's getting more technical than this show needs. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, or, or we do, and you don't want to hear it. Um, so I spent about six hours this weekend troubleshooting the audio problems that we had last week. And essentially what I have is one of the outputs for my Zoom L12 routing into input one and then having that muted on all the channels. And that input 
it, channel one is actually what the computer is listening to to send this out to the masses uh, watching us live on Twitch. Mm. Yes, that was a pain in the ass. Yeah, it sounds it sounds overly complicated to me. It, it is, and what it comes down to is Windows can accept all fourteen channels, you know, because it's a twelve channel mixer plus the two master channels, you know, left and right. It can mm. accept all fourteen, but it only wants to listen to one and two, mm. which. <sighs> yeah. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. Now, we- on the other hand, since I have it fixed, that means my Behringer is coming to you. So, in which case, you'll be able to actually split out your audio and have multi track recording as well. Because right now, you just got left and right. And, well, you, yeah. it, it's a world of difference. <laughs> we, we moved offices this week at work. Mm hmm. And uh, we had a lot of computer problems, and a lot of it was just related to Windows. Windows being Windows. <laughs> and so we had, so this this very much reminds me of of, of that because we went on a um, we went on a Windows rant that ended up being a, a fairly comedic Bill Gates rant, kind of like a you know thanks Bill, mm. you know appreciate Bill, I appreciate you adding in this you know whatever. It was, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah th- this, uh, so I, I actually thought, well, if I hook it up to my Mac, will I get the same problems that I'm getting out of Windows? And yes, exactly the same problems. So it's literally a driver issue. It's not a, it's not oh. an OS system or OS no, it issue. Sounds more like a picnic issue. No, no, I, I eliminated that. Uh, <laughs> he called in some help. Yeah, the the um, the Behringer was is an OS issue because I hook it up to the Mac and it works fine, which is why it's going to work great for you. Mm. Um, mm. For whatever whatever change in Windows and during the Creators update kind of fucked everything up, but the that will work great for you because you're only on Mac. Bar as mine, I was like, well, let me switch over to Mac with this L12 and see if the same thing happens, and it did. Even though it can find all 14 channels, it can only listen to the first two, mm. which is not fucking helpful. Yeah. That's a, so uh, I, I've listened to other podcasts about podcasting and that seems to be a, a fairly common problem. The, great hardware being put out, but mm-hmm. they're not, they're not putting enough attention into the drivers or any, uh, you know, uh, uh, inclusive software. Yep. So it it renders their their beautiful, wonderful, miraculous hardware either either straight up useless or just like under under utilizable. Is that, is that a word? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, we can just create words on the show because fuck it. Now yeah. I, I will say that um, huh, I will say that the. The Zoom L12 is an amazing piece of equipment, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. in audition, I can address all twelve or all fourteen channels as I need without, like you know, without without any issues. It's just at the OS level. So something that programs can do, namely audition, can do, but it's not letting the operating system do, which is double pissy. Um, yeah, it reminds me of ATI. Actually, remember ATI cards? Is the old ATI video cards? There's like either you could get an NVIDIA one that would work with everything, or an ATI one that would smoke the NVIDIA card if you can get it working. <laughs> yes, that, like certain certain motherboards, it was great. Other ones, it was just yeah, uh, amazing yeah. hardware shit drivers. That, that's the story of ATI video cards. Yeah. So, all right, hey man, uh, tell me about Willow. What the hell? Like, why would you watch Willow instead of Princess Bride? I say this, willing to accept the. The, the the hate that I get because I've never really been a big fan of Willow, although I fucking love The Princess Bride. Dude, I, I love both of those movies. I I love them. Willow is is I, I don't know really why Willow is so special to me, but it's one of the movies that I've seen probably over a hundred times. Hmm. Uh it, it's up there with with 1989's Batman, um, any of the original trilogy Star Wars movies. Like there's certain movies I've just seen many, 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 many times. And Willow is one of them. But I hadn't seen that movie in probably 15 years. I don't know. It's been forever since I saw that movie. And 
I wanted to watch an old movie. Like I was actually thinking about watching Dark Crystal. Mm, but I was okay. like, you know what? I'll I'll check that one out later. It's actually streaming on Netflix right now. And uh, I, I want to watch that in, in preparation for the series that's coming out on Netflix here in like, uh, geez, like three weeks or something like that. It's coming out real soon. Right. And But I was like, okay, I'm going to hold off on Dark Crystal. What else do I want to watch? Ooh, uh, something else from that era. Do I want to watch Princess Bride? Ooh, yeah, maybe. Wait a minute. Willow. <laughs> so, yeah, dude. And even though I could quote that movie almost word for word. I was just like, I was almost like a child again, watching this movie. I, I love it. Love it. Love it so much. Yeah. I just, something, something about the movie. And it's probably more to do with my, uh, where I was in life when it came out and became popular. And my stepdad recorded it off HBO Mm. than the movie itself. And, you know, because I've only seen it like twice and, it was a really weird, weird, well, weird time. To me, it, it, it's kind of like because we were very limited for for good fantasy movies, like like medieval fantasy, like D and D style movies, Tolkien esque. Right, right. We were very limited on on quality movies like that. Right. Still, Willow, me, still are. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean but you, you mentioned Lord of the Rings. Well, you mentioned Tolkien. Uh, Lord of the Rings is like that's amazing yeah uh, but the last but one came I, out in like 2004 or something so yeah well, i mean you're right we don't have a lot to draw on right but we but the ones that do come out tend to be much higher quality than what we were getting in the 80s uh like Beastmaster was one of my favorite movies when i was a kid i watched that recently probably like within the last year and oh boy <laughs> oh boy it does not hold up yeah it it does not um but willow does like it was it was filmed it's a ron howard movie and it was it was filmed with like care and attention like it it holds up because it doesn't it didn't rely on on cgi first of all so there's no cgi on it it's all practical effects right and those movies tend to hold up a lot better than than like aged cgi um but it's also like there's no tropes of the time Right. So like if you watch a just like a, a comedy movie from the 80s or just like an action movie from the 80s, you're going to look at it and be like, holy shit, that's so 1980s. Same with 90s or early 2000s or wh- whatever uh, time period you want to talk about. But mm-hmm. Willow is not a slave to any of those tropes. So it's it feels like a live action Dungeons and Dragons movie. And it's it's set in its own little world with its own rules and it just it works on every level for me, and I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. Now I haven't seen it since like eighty nine, so I might have to go revisit that just to. <laughs> you might have to do that just just to see. We, we need we need to have like a watch party so that I can catch all your reactions. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe um, it's uh it's about time we start checking out on some new movies though. Well, hold on. D- tell me about Princess Bride real quick before we move on to the new stuff. Oh, that, the, the whole thing about Princess Bride was the fact that I'm, I'm editing the Rob Reiner podcast tonight. Oh, which is super duper exciting. Right. I was uh, invited to go, but uh, plane tickets are expensive. They are, man, especially coming from north of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, you got to hop on Dragon back and shit. I know. It's too cold up here for the Griffins. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyway, yeah. So now I'm now I'm super curious about the new movies. What 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 have we got going on? Well, let's find out. Welcome to your movie draft minute, presented by Diamond Club TV for the week of July twenty second, two thousand nineteen. I'm your host, Big Voice J, brought to you by Spiders, your original web developers. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Game Nights in last place with $211.5 million. Dana Bond Squad's in fifth place with $351.5 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming gets $243 million from the Lion King. And fourth place with $642 million. Team Have a Drink is in third place with $775.2 million. Team Ritual Misery gets second place with $947.7 million. And in first place with $1,253.5 million, it's Team Movie Party. Let you Dream Team Movie Drive Minute. All totals are record as of July 24th, 2019. If you had told me that we would have gotten, we would have been edging on a billion dollars during the summer movie draft, 
Mm-hmm. I would have put money down that we were the top team. Oh, the, the fact yes. that we are edging on a billion dollars in the draft and we're still three hundred thousand dollars behind first place. Yep. Yep. Come the fuck on, man. Dude, what an it's Yeah, everybody's talking about how movies aren't making money anymore. Like, right. what the fuck, dude? The top three teams are sitting at about three billion dollars combined. Yeah, it's like, what. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's, that's just domestic gross. Like, that's not even counting yes, China. It's just domestic. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what what they're talking about. Um, but so looking at the totals, yes, I am. There, there's a countdown to see if. Well, not a countdown necessarily, but a kind of a, a billion dollar watch. Like, are, is RMP gonna cross that billion dollar barrier? Um, I'm, I'm thinking we might, dude. We're yeah. only like fifty million out. Yeah, like it's possible, dude. Spider Man is still making a shitload of money, and uh, we're still getting Secret Life of Pets two money even. So it's yeah. like, oh man, come on. I think Drunk Kids Gaming is gonna overtake. Have a drink. But other than that, I think this is this is the final shakeout. Yeah, I, I, I man, if we cross a billion and don't win, I'm gonna be so pissed. <laughs> well, but I, I think that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> like, so get ready to be pissed. <laughs> like I would rather get 999 million than a billion and come in second. Like that's where I'm at with it. No, dude, I want I want a bill. I want to land exactly on a billion. No. <laughs> I will I will fight the OCD just to uh not have to deal with being a billion dollar team Dude, if, and not coming if in first. Get, if if we get like like nine hundred and ninety nine million, nine hundred and ninety nine thousand, nine hundred and something, like I'll go see Spider Man like six more times. <laughs> just so that we cross over. And plus it was a good movie. Like I I'll I'll probably just go and and take five of my friends with me. <laughs> It's a good movie. Oh, I don't know, man. If you want to see something good, though, cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash support or head on over to patreon.com slash ritualmisery and throw a couple bucks our way and keep this podcast going as awesome as it is. Hell yeah, man. Over at patreon.com slash ritualmisery, we got all kinds of good stuff for our patrons. we got pre-shows, post-shows, uncut, complete shows. We've got exclusive interviews. Uh, there's the, all kinds of stuff that's just been popping up in there lately. Uh, we've actually been talking over the last several days about some potential interviews that we are going to do exclusively for our patrons. And if yep. we pull these off, they're going to be great. I promise that. And, um, you're going to be upset if you're not a patron over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yep. Uh, and with that being said, it's time. Let me find my button. There it is. For this. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. All right, man. Uh, you have called this one, Oh, Captain, My Captain. Yes. Any idea what this one might be about? Uh, it's going to be about uh, Captain Cook. Mm. No? Like... Like the 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 old uh, privateer. Yes. Captain. Uh, well, I mean, who's only privateer for part of his career? Well, yeah. I mean, okay. So the the navy uh, uh, explorer that decided to go into business for himself. <laughs> the, the navy explorer that decided, you know what? Maybe dropping syphilis on the Hawaiian Islands wasn't what I intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of going into business for yourself. Special <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Get getting down with. The natives. Uh, no, it's that's not the captain. <laughs> oh, question. Oh. Uh, no, so San Diego Comic Con. Yes. Just and mm-hmm. there was some uh, nerdy stuff going on there. So I figured I wanted to make a nerdy uh, Comic Con related quiz. In this one, I am going to read you a statement about a character, and you are to tell me was this statement about Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? Oh, you're not much of a Trekkie, right? I mean, I I would not be a Trekkie by classification, though. Okay, like so. Describe for us your 
experience and affinity for the Star Trek franchise? Uh, the original three seasons are garbage. I hated them. I hated watching them when I was little. I hate watching reruns now. I think they're just complete shit. Uh, for me, Star Trek began at the new generation. Uh, the next generation. Sure. And <laughs> Picard will always be the captain for which I have the most affinity for. And I never really went beyond that because there were so many other good things to watch. So I never never watched DS9 or, or you know, any of those other ones. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. Interesting. All right. So to me, I, I found, like, I would get 100% on, on this quiz that I made, which is actually kind of rare for me. Um, okay. But knowing that you were not, like, a, a you know, real up in the Star Trek lore, mm -hmm. I'm interested to see... How how you do on pretty basic Star Trek knowledge <laughs> about Captain Kirk and Captain Picard? All right, let's let's do this. All right, man. Uh, tell me if this statement is about Captain Kirk or Captain Picard. His middle name is Tiberius. Oh, that's Kirk. Of course, James Tiberius Kirk. Yep. All right. Um, he it, well, it, it would be really weird if it was Jean Luc Tiberius. <laughs> you know <laughs> right yeah well see and i wasn't even sure if if you remembered character names so it could have been like you know thomas tiberius picard or something like in your head like mm, yeah no so so okay all right so you passed that first one yeah well right. on my way to the d so who is this who is this true about he prefers earl gray t uh picard okay all right so you having an affinity for Picard is kind of um, I'm, I'm starting to believe it now because that's definitely a Picard thing. Um, he, he, he asks the replicator uh, T Earl Grey hot. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, who plus, is this true? Plus it was referenced in a weird house song. Oh God, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> All sorts of pop culture references to the, the Earl Grey. Yep. All right. So who's this true about? He is from Iowa. The, now that's a good one, but I think it's Kirk. You think it's Kirk? Yeah. Okay. It is indeed. Picard is from France. Right, but I, that's uh, the, yeah. He's a, he's an English actor uh, with an in, with a, playing a character with an, a British accent, uh, but deriving from France. France. Yeah, well, Americans are dumb. We we can't figure out accents. As long as, any character with a British accent is foreign. It could be an Asian dude with a British accent. We're like, yeah, works. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. In, in fact, one of my favorite camera reviewers is named Kai something, and he used to be based out of Hong Kong, and he speaks with a British accent. Ah, uh, well, that I mean, that makes sense because <laughs> if you speak English in Hong Kong, it's a, definitely yeah. Of course going to be a British accent but, because but, it was a but now British he's now, now he's now he's a uh, uh, a I believe China well I'm going to assume Chinese he is a Chinese dude with a British accent living in Belgium and working in Germany okay so he's just like an overall uh, dealing with Japanese companies primarily oh okay <laughs> so he's very worldly he's very <laughs> northern hemisphere <laughs> Yeah, if I find out he's got an Australian wife, it'd be like, "Fuck, I lose. I can't." Do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, with with like cousins in Panama or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Amos. Question four: Who is this referring to? His father's name is Maurice. Maurice. Yep. As in Maurice. Yeah. So, <laughs> some people call me the space cowboy. Yeah, Some yeah. Some people call me the gangster of love. Some people call me Maurice. Yeah. Because <laughs> <sighs> I preach about the purpose of love. Anyway, uh, Maurice. I'm going to go with James Tiberius Kirk because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> nope. Uh, Kirk's dad's name is George. George Kirk was a Starfleet captain before before Jim was. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> tell me who this is about. He 
commanded the USS Enterprise D. Ooh. So there's at least five, probably more, starcraft or starships in Star Trek with the name USS Enterprise. But this one is the 1701D. I'm going to go with... Oh, hmm. I'm going to go with Jean-Luc Picard. It is indeed. Picard it... commanded the D. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, we're seven years old. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kirk, then, Kirk was like the B or the C, right? He, um, well, he he commanded 1701 and 1701 A. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember uh, B and C. Like where those kind of. I think those were in the the intervening century between Kirk's and Picard's times. Right. I think. Um, but Picard commanded uh, D and E, or at least the beginning of E. Uh, yeah. But the, like th- pretty much the entirety of the the, the life of D, <laughs> Picard was 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 uh, he was ruling the D. Which, which which by the way, the life of D should be a title. It should be. <laughs> it really should be. Which um, our live audience can uh, add that on twitch.tv slash ritual misery by using the bank s command which is exclamation point lowercase s space and then whatever title you want it to be all right amos number six he became assimilated by the borg picard of course locutus of borg the ambassador to the human race all right Number seven. At the time he took command, he was Starfleet's youngest starship captain. Kirk. Of course. Of course. Uh, Captain McCard looked like he was about 65 years old (laughs) when when he was a captain um, like 30 years ago. So, yeah, Picard looked like Sean Connery when he started. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, when Picard started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. So, uh, number eight. He has a son named David. So I threw this one in there because I think this is um, something that you have in common with this captain. Picard. <laughs> hmm. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, introduces us to David, well, not Kirk, uh, because he was born to his single mother, that uh, Kirk kind of, like, uh, what was the NWA song? F- find him, fuck him, and flee. <laughs> um, that's well, kind of what Kirk did. And, and that's kind of where I was going with that, because if, if, like, I can see Picard having one child named David. I can see Kirk having, like, three or five children named David. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was thinking like 30 or 50, but you know. Well, we're just talking about Davids though. I mean. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> three, yeah, three to five Davids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, next one, number nine. He was born in the 24th century. Picard. Yeah. Yep. That was that was rough because I did I knew it was either the twenty fourth or twenty seventh, and I didn't Ooh. remember which one was which. To, uh, what was uh Duck Dodgers, the the twenty something in a fourth century, twenty twenty seventh in a quarter or fuck what was it what was it I don't know somebody looked that up for us <laughs> Duck Dodgers, um, all right. Final question. Who is this statement about? He once had to time travel with whales to save the Earth from destruction. Kirk. Yeah. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Uh, probably the, the best Star Trek movie of all time. I mean... Uh, it was pretty good. 
I think the best part of that, of that movie was when they're parked in the, the park and people yep. are running into the landing gear. Yes. Because they it, it's invisible. It's cloaked. So they just keep walking along. Donk, and they start hitting it and shit. Yeah. That's that's my yep. favorite part of that movie. But anyway. All right. So, so, so what did I get? Well, you beat the D mm. with yeah, a score of 8 out of 10. Oh, damn. Yeah. You, you uh, significantly beat the D. Hmm. <laughs> You thoroughly beat the D. I thoroughly, I, I, I sufficiently you, beat the D. You beat the D like it did something wrong. <laughs> I mean, it probably yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> so San Diego Comic-Con, also known as Comic-Con, uh, was last weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it did. Yeah, it was. It it, it really, really was. Uh, which, as of this recording, was uh, it? It wrapped up about uh, about five days ago. Yeah, four days, four, five, four. Which, as of this release, was probably about three months ago. <laughs> yeah, this was recorded in 2019. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, well. yeah. There was some there was some pretty interesting stuff. So I do want to address something real quick. Oh. Last week on the show, I said I was looking forward to the Star Wars announcements and. I predicted that there would be a trailer of some sort, either mm-hmm. for the Mandalorian or for uh, Episode Nine, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh huh. Um, I I was gravely mistaken. Um, no, there was. So wait, 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 wait. Before you continue, I believe there was one of the people on the show last week that mentioned that they were doubtful that anything major would come out now because there is a Disney announcement coming within the next few weeks. Yeah, so next month is is D23, yeah. I think. Yeah, I wonder who that would have been that, that cast that doubt. And... Yeah, well, <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> anyway, whoever it was probably doesn't matter. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the only... The only that's why we're not on time releasing these. <laughs> so there's, re- <laughs> there's really only thing, uh, one thing Star Wars related that, that even happened was the the Sith Trooper appeared, uh, which is like a red stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm interested what that is. Like, what the fuck's a Sith trooper? Because, okay. Um, I'm excited to see what that is. But anyway, other than that, there wasn't really anything Star Wars related at, at Comic-Con. Which is good, because um, I think we've learned in the last few years, that especially working up to a movie of great import, uh, we we do. there's there's a, a massive amount of burnout that happens even amongst the fans of the of the franchise to where the movie instead of the movie hyping everybody up and getting everybody talking about it the movie kind of makes closure and you're already facing that with this being the third movie in a trilogy mm. of trilogies right you know so you're already facing that that closure epidemic that may occur at the end of this movie you don't want people to be semi burnt out on it be going up into it so um, uh, I can appreciate not having a major announcement of any sort at SDCC. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair, and you know, especially with the the aforementioned Disney event that's coming up in about a month. Um, but speaking of of Star Wars people, though, uh, Natalie Portman appeared, mm. so Queen Amidala herself appeared on stage, but it has nothing to do with Star Wars. Uh, she was appearing in the form of Jane Foster of the Thor MCU franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, did you, did you hear about this? I did not, but as soon as you said Natalie Portman, I wish I had. Oh yeah. <laughs> she's fantastic. She's, I, she's... uh, I thought Natalie Portman was amazing going back all the way to like the professional. Oh um, yeah. And then uh, was it black Swan? Like, um, I didn't see it. Oh, I heard things. It, it's, I mean, I mean, there, it's, 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 it's an artsy movie for sure. It's not for everybody, but it, holy shit, it was an amazing flick. That so what I heard about that movie it sounds like a good TDY movie. <laughs> like if I go TDY by myself. Oh, not at not inaccurate. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so now plays Jane Foster in the Thor franchise. She's been missing from the MCU for several years. Well, she she had a brief appearance in in game. Um uh, but Spoilers. I think they were just using, I mean, I think they're just using like archive footage. Like I don't think I, I don't even know if Natalie Portman actually showed up on set for in <laughs> um but 
Jane Foster, the character, is coming back in a big, big, big way for Thor 4, which mm. is called Love and Thunder. Uh, I'm super excited for it. It's not coming out till 2021. So that's, there's quite a quite a ways to go. Um, but when I, movies like, are, when movies are announced two years ahead of time, to me it's never oh they 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 announce a movie. To me it's oh they're trying to stop the paparazzi from breaking the story. I this, mean this is maybe, damage they control. Had a lot of they had a lot of huge announcements for Marvel. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about two of them. Yeah, the whole new timeline came out, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So in like spring or summer, I think of 2021, Thor love and thunder is coming out. Uh, Taika Waititi is coming back to direct this one. He directed the third one, uh, Thor Ragnarok, which, um, wow. Um, that is one of, you want to talk about favorite movies. I have seen Thor Ragnarok probably close to 30 times, if not more. Yeah. Uh, so good. And Taika Waititi, like I will watch anything he, he could direct a movie about paint drying and I would probably lovingly, adoringly watch it. <laughs> um, he is so great. Um, I'm, I'm showing on screen, uh, some pictures of Natalie Portman. Right. And, I mean, so, there's other people too, but I don't care. Yeah. Well, so the, that, the big announcement involved Natalie Portman, not just for the return of Jane Foster into the, the story, but they kind of spoiled the like main plot point of the movie in that Jane Foster is going to become the new Thor. She is going to take the 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 hammer Mjolnir and the, as as fans of Thor know or fans of MCU, you have to be worthy of holding the hammer. And so far in in the movie franchise anyway, we've only seen two people being worthy enough to wield Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently Jane Foster is worthy because she is going to take over the mantle of Thor from uh, Thor Odinson. So hell yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm dude. I so great. I'm a little bit confused about why they, they've revealed such a major plot point at the movie's announcement, but Okay, whatever. I'm I'm down. I'm down. I'm still gonna watch. This. Like I'm like I'm gonna skip an MCU movie. That's not likely to happen. Right. Uh, all right. So the next thing that got me really excited was Blade is coming back. Yeah. This this one I'd heard about, and uh, I've heard a lot of different things about it. Basically, go tell me tell me what you got out of it because what I got out of it was people were either very angry or very happy that Wesley Snipes was not going to be the lead character. Well, I mean, so Wesley Snipes played Blade like 25 years ago. Right. There was a trilogy of movies. Mm -hmm. I, so d did you watch those, by the way? Uh, I did. I've watched all of them one time each. Okay. So I wouldn't say it, I'm intricately familiar, but I did watch them. They're, they're good as far as like, you know, slaying vampires and stuff like that goes. It was, it was okay. Uh, was yeah, it, wasn't, I, I was, wasn't, I was happy with him. So the first Blade movie, I've I've seen that one probably a dozen times. I, I really liked that movie. I also am a big fan of the darker Marvel storylines. So like the the when they start getting into the supernatural realm, right? So like Blade, Morbius, Ghost Rider, uh, stuff like that. I I'm really into that that uh, type of storytelling coming from Marvel. And Blade was one of those characters that I really, really enjoyed. So when when the Wesley Snipes movie came out, I was super stoked and I felt like it was done great justice. Like Wesley Snipes was great in that movie. It was really good. Uh, the second and the third just kind of seemed mm, all right. So you made money on the first one. You want to pump out a couple more sequels. All right. They were fine. But I've seen each of those. Maybe twice at most. Right. Uh, first one I, I like I'll, I'll go back and watch the first one uh they're but, they're 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 catches on tv but that's kind of about it like they're yeah not... but these were these were 25 years ago you right. know this is mcu which is completely different from what was going on uh back in the 90s when blade came out the the old blade the original blade uh so 
so Blade is going to be played by uh, Marshala Ali, uh, which is an Academy Award winning actor, uh, amazing actor. And he want like he requested, if I understand the story right, he actually requested to Kevin Feige to make a Blade movie and cast him in it. <laughs> and they're making a Blade movie and they cast him as Blade. Weird how that works. <clears throat> yeah, so I I think it's gonna be great. I I really was hoping that at some point MCU would would introduce the the darker storylines. So like in the in the um, ABC television series Agents of Shield, they did bring in Ghost Rider into the TV show. Right. But Blade coming into the storyline is the the first time we've gotten uh, the like that uh, you know like Marvel After Dark kind of kind of storyline i think um uh doctor strange is the closest thing that we've gotten up to this point uh so i'm i'm pretty stoked uh i don't think we have a release date for blade but i'm so looking forward to it man yeah this is actually something that that interests me not because it's mcu just because i enjoy that that darker kind of tinge to the mcu so um, I'm all about it. I'm really excited about this next thing that you have in here, though. Like, I am stoked about it and pissed off at the same time. Okay. All right. Why don't you go ahead and introduce it since I introduced the last two? Um, they brought out Jean Luc Picard. Yeah. Yeah. On, on stage and said, Yeah, we're going to do a, a, a Picard show. Yep. So CBS All Access. Yeah. Uh, is- and, and that's why I'm pissed off. <laughs> Because it's on CBS All Access. Yes, I'm gonna have if to we were anywhere be else on my the... prime and watch it from somewhere else. Like this. That's Urgh. what I was about to say. If we were anywhere else on the planet, or or if our IP address identified as anywhere else on the planet, we could get it with our Amazon Prime account. Yep, this is one I will have to acquire post season running. Um, so I haven't watched the new Star Trek series, uh, Star Trek Discovery. That they've had two seasons now. On, I, right, I haven't watched it because it's been on CBS All Access. Exactly, same, same. Um, I, it's been a long time since something has excited me from the Star Trek universe. I was interested in Discovery, but I wasn't excited about it. Picard is a different thing altogether. I am super excited about it. I'm excited to the point where I might have to get CBS All Access to watch this. Yeah, I don't know if I'm that excited. I might, I'm, I'm excited enough about this that I might have to use your CBS All Access to watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, if, if they have like, you know, two screens simultaneous or whatever, like we might just, yeah, like I'll just get it and then we can both watch it. Yeah. Um, the, the kickers on this, though, the, the things that really brought this in, uh, and I had to, had to make sure that I had this right for uh, Jerry Reiner, Jer- Jerry Ryan. But they brought Jerry uh, Ryan and Brent yes. Spiner out and yes. said they're both going to be in the show. Now, Jerry Ryan played Seven of Nine. Yep, yep. And Brent Spiner played Data, did he not? He did. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, th- I thought so. That's why I didn't look that one up. I was fairly comfortable with getting that one wrong. But, um, yeah, I that that excites me. Uh, Data is one of my favorite characters just because mm-hmm. the dynamic that he presented – not necessarily because he was a hack on the show, like they could always just go to data and get the answer, but because it presented that humanity question uh, very, very front facing. Yeah, very much like what makes a human human. Right. Uh, and, and they addressed it more in later seasons of TNG than they did early on, but it was always just kind of like that, that part of it was, was one of the things that I really liked about the show. And he made a really good replacement for Spock, a one-for-one one replacement for Spock. The, the logic, the not understanding the humans and the emotions and things like that. and But it wasn't as extreme as Spock. So it kind of like leveled it out and added its own little mystery to it and things like that. And that's what I, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about um, TNG was was the dynamic character of Data. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Seven of Nine, well, one, she's like this recovered Borg or, or whatever. Because, I mean, I, I never watched, what, what was it? What was she on? She was on Voyager. Voyager, there we go. Um, so I never watched Voyager, but I I know the character, and I've seen a lot of people really really love Seven of Nine, and <laughs> yes, and for good reason. Well, I mean, she's not unattractive. 
Well, oh yeah, there's that as well. She's also just a very dynamic uh, character study. Well, I, 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 I'm excited because if they're going to bring, bring Data back, and they, he's, he's going to be enough of the show they brought him out to announce. And I mean, hopefully that doesn't mean he's going to be a, a fucking cameo uh, for well, either one of these characters. Yeah, I mean, there's so, so spoiler alert. Who for for anyone who hasn't seen Star Trek Nemesis, which is the most recent. Star Trek movie that has the old cast, like the old, um, the original timeline cast, uh, data is destroyed at the end of that movie. So there's speculation. Is this flashback? Is this on the holodeck? Is this, is he rebuilt? Like what's going on with data? Right. But even that for them to bring him, bring him up on stage means that he's not going to be an insignificant part. Hopefully. Right. Exactly, um, um, and then support- it, and then you take seven of nine and add that dynamic in with Picard. Come on, man, that's just gold. Yeah. This is the first time we've seen those characters interact, which I think is to be great because, as we mentioned in the quiz, Picard was Locutus of Borg, right, for a time. So he was this- he was he was assimilated and released, right, and it took him a long time to recover physically, and he's probably still recovering mentally right from from that experience because that was kind of the that was kind of a, a character uh progression uh sticking point i guess for for the character of picard for the entire rest of the series was the trauma that he experienced by uh w- with the borg assimil- assimilation right uh so so yeah interacting with seven of nine is kind of like a dream come true yeah. Uh, but also, Commander Riker and Counselor Troy are are going to be in the show. I thought I had seen that, but I wasn't sure, and it's not on yeah. the on the links that I that, I, that you sent or that I'd seen previously. So, yeah, it's it's just farther further down in the article. But yeah, it's so if you haven't watched the trailer, uh, then, and that was the big release of the um, during the the Comic Con announcement was the full length trailer for it. Uh, I, I encourage you to check it out. <clears throat> there will be a link in the show notes for it. Um, but yeah, it's if, if you liked Star Trek The Next Generation, this is going to get all your, your fanboy feels going. Um, so good. I That is the thing that I was most excited about during San Diego Comic-Con's many, 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 many announcements and, and yeah. revelations. And to clarify, apparently after reading this while you were just talking and I wasn't paying attention because that's, that's how, <laughs> that's how podcasts work. Um, right. they were joined on stage by Brent Spiner and Jerry Ryan. It doesn't say they're actually going to be like a major part of the show. And it was announced that John, Jonathan Frakes, which plays Riker and Marina Sirtis, uh, uh, counselor Deanna Troy will make appearances, which means they're not going to be regular characters, but they will be probably in the first couple episodes uh, you know, essentially expanded cameos, probably. Yeah. Um, but that does, that does give me doubt that uh, about Data and Seven of Nine. So I don't. Uh, I watch the trailer. But you know what? As long as uh, as long as as long as they don't bring get bring back Q, I'm good. You didn't like Q? No, I you fucking hated the... Q. What? I I don't like the character that fucks things up. And causes the drama. I've always hated that character. You know, like you, you got the guy that's like, you know what? I should throw away this cup, but I'm just going to leave it right here. And then that cup ends up tripping the hero later and causing even more fucking, you know, I've always hated that character. And Q was like the epitome of that character. See, he, I, he, he could. I think he, I would agree with you if Q was not played by John Delancey. John Delancey is brilliant and i yes no i'll love- ag- i will agree with that i kn- i didn't say the acting wasn't was uh, uh, the character i know i his portrayal of q is like, astounding I yes second of of q yes yeah, because of john delancey but i hate the character i hate the <laughs> archetype of q i got you yeah i, I follow fuck <sighs> <laughs> like every, every, as soon as I recognize that there's one of those characters in a movie, because not every movie has it or whatever, not every TV show has it. But as soon as I recognize that that's happening, it just pisses me off. And all I'm hoping for is for that character to 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 go away very very bad. Yeah. So yeah, I 
how crazy would it be if Q is actually in this series, though? Yeah, oh. and, I mean, and this this includes Shaggy, by the way. Shaggy and Scooby. Sometimes <laughs> they I'll be Shaggy's, wa- huh? Shaggy's an idiot. Well, yes, but sometimes they're the 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 character that that causes the strife later on, and right. the that entire episode, I'm just like, fuck this dog and his stupid stoner owner. Stoner owner. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with it. All right. Um, yeah. So Picard coming to CBS All Access soon. That's that's actually fairly exciting. I like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, so great. Yep. All right, man. Uh, what else? Uh, what else do we need to pick up about SDCC? What other surprises were there? I mean, there, it was it was very heavily Marvel. And I'm not going to run down all the Marvel stuff because most of it you don't even care about or would even recognize. Yeah. Uh, Here's the thing that got me about SDCC this year. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that stopped the news cycle. Okay. Sometimes Comic-Con happens and there's something that, like C- uh, CNN is like, whoa, we got to include this in our fucking rundown. You know? Ah, yeah, there. Yeah, there really. No, there was no. Except, like the only thing I saw in like my mainstream news feeds, and you know, not counting like in entertainment or like nerd news or whatever, uh, was the Natalie Portman uh, Thor thing. That that did have some crossover. I, I didn't even I didn't even see that overly. So I saw the 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 biggest thing that I saw was the graphic that had the map of of MCU the MCU map. Oh, the timeline. For, uh, for the, for the fourth arc or whatever the fuck they're calling it, phase four. Yeah, yep. phase four. That that's that's the only thing that even broke into the 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 common or zeitgeist to me. Mm. Um, I, but usually there's something that breaks out. Something that's like holy shit, everyone should know this happened to SDCC, and we didn't really get that this year. Yeah, maybe because so, we already spent all our money at the fucking theater. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hey, so. Are are you gonna do the MCU backwards watch project? That um um so I I uh, I thought about it and I didn't really care for the idea too much until I heard how good these last two Spider Man movies were. Mm. And now I'm like shit. Well, if I do it backwards, I get to watch those first. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it'll be it'll be Spider Man. Uh, Far From Home and then Endgame, which are two of the <laughs> best MCU movies ever. Right, and then just and then right before that, or right after that, like very shortly after that, is another Spider Man movie. Yeah, well, I think the Captain Spi- Marvel, I think, is the next one, and, and then, then Spider Verse. Well, yeah, Spider Verse, but that's Spider Verse is not part of MCU. Right, but it still have you to watch, watch it now, and it's not part of that. <sighs> but uh, but 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 why? Why not wrap that into the whole run? I mean, you could, exactly. or you could watch that right now. Because no. right, I will tell you right now, Into the Spider Verse is one of the coolest fucking movies ever made. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, it, for animated or otherwise, it's just ridiculously yes. good. You, you should just watch that. Like, after you finish editing the show and producing the show that that you're you're required to do tonight, <laughs> like this weekend, you need to watch it with the entire family, and mm. everyone in your house will enjoy that movie. And it's streaming on Netflix right now, right? Yes, it is. it is. Yeah, it's so good, dude. You won't regret it. Like that movie is fucking fantastic. It's you so do. good. All right, um, but I catch you off. Speaking of fantastic, another uh, uh, announcement for Marvel is that yeah. Fantastic Four is coming to MCU. Right, and that's uh, we which, already had to do that, but it's official now. Well, I mean, and and rightly so. It, it's been missing. Yeah. So. And I actually enjoyed the first... Well, I, I kind of enjoyed both of the last Fantastic Four movies. I thought they were pretty good. I enjoyed them. I okay. A lot of people had a lot of heartache, but I know nothing about Fantastic Four, so it was it was good to me. <laughs> so the one that came out like 10 years ago or so? No, probably no longer ago than that yeah. because uh, Chris Evans was um, uh, Johnny Storm, uh, the current Captain America. <laughs> right, like, hey. He, was in a Marvel movie before he was in MCU, so it's pretty crazy. 
So it was probably like 15 ish years ago. That one that I thought that was, um, it was entertaining. It was, it was silly and cute and I had fun with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little less. So the second one, the, uh, rise so- of the silver, silver surfer, it was okay. Not, all right. But the handling of Galactus, I think was complete trash. But again, I didn't, I don't have any context to that. So yeah, well, I mean, I don't think you have to have any understanding of Galactus to know that the portrayal was complete trash because there's just <laughs> a cloud in space. Oh no! Here comes this cloud. I mean, Shit. everybody if, run! If it's you a don't, cloud. if you don't know, you don't know. So, I guess you don't know well, what Galact- you don't know. Galactus is like a giant that eats planets, right? And he's in the shape of a person in space, and he eats planets, like literally eats a planet. Does he sh- does, does he shoot asteroids? I mean, probably, but uh, in the movie it was like, oh no, here comes a cloud! It's a cloud, everybody. Be afraid, be afraid. It's a cloud. Oh, maybe that was just his 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 breath. Yeah, I don't know, but um, yeah, I d- I didn't bother watching the latest incarnation of it because no, I haven't either. It's like um, got like a one point something on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes and just- I. I didn't because I didn't realize it was there. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I heard nothing good about it from anyone that Marvel fans, casual fans, like no, nothing good, nothing at all good. All right, um, <laughs> hey man, what do you say we close this thing out then? Yeah, dude. Hey, people should go to my Instagram. You showed a still from my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I'm pimping right now. I'm Del Noche on Instagram. Check me out. Boom. Uh, I am. Ethan Kane on Twitter. Uh, and it's getting more and more political as we go on because I'm feeling more and more free to say what I actually think uh, in preparation for 36 yeah. days from now. Yep. Yeah, you're almost retired for real. By the time this is in your podcast, <laughs> Amos's Twitter should be lit the fuck up. <laughs> oh my God. Mueller, Mueller testified yesterday and. Uh, I mean, did he? Uh, yeah. I mean, did <laughs> right yeah well <laughs> listen to talking feds tomorrow and you will find out uh ah, where people find talking feds talkingfeds.com right on or on twitter oh. at, at talking feds pod yep or just yeah. follow me and you'll see that i retweet about half the shit <laughs> yeah. or jenny j23 <laughs> jenny j23 uh harry Littman. uh <laughs> yeah um, anyway, um, uh, no, what the only thing that you should be following is at ritual misery on Twitter. Oh, that, yeah, that we should probably tell people about that at ritual yeah, misery. Cause I, so much happens there. What I really want people to do is go over to, uh, bit.ly slash RMP discord, join our conversation in there. It's when it's good, it's really good. So, uh, make it good with your own words, <laughs> bit.ly slash RMP di- discord. Wow. Yeah. And uh, of course, you can find all these links in more ways to support the show and give feedback at our site, ritualmisery.com. Yeah. I want to say thank you to Kevin McLeod, whose music you're hearing fade in right now. Yeah. Also, we are live every Thursday at 7 30 p.m. Pacific. Bye. <laughs> This show, this fucking show. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. So we're live on DiamondClub.tv <laughs> and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Yeah. I was expecting you to go to that, then you took a long pause and skipped past that thing, Kevin McLeod, and then I was like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I didn't realize that until after I said the Kevin McLeod thing because I would have sworn that was next. No, especially because I heard his music start to play and I was like, "Oh, that, that's not that's, that's what not for the asks are." Yeah, that, that's what fucked you up. You're not used to hearing the music come back at you. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but the asterisks on our show notes very clearly indicates that that's where the music starts. <laughs> Respond with the the we're live on Diamond Club. Yeah, blah that that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, and that's exactly what happened. Is I hit the button, I started reading that, and then 
All yeah, hell went to hell. Yeah, I, I was super off put, not off put, but but uh, taken off balance by, <laughs> by hearing the music. <laughs> like, oh, music, it's Kevin McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the natural reaction anybody should have anytime they hear uh, music on the internet. Yeah, I mean, especially Kevin McLeod's music, which is on about, uh, I don't know, 75% of the YouTube videos you watch. Right. Yeah, you're not kidding. And, and like 98% of the, the podcasts you listen to. Uh, and according to IMDb, it's in about 20% of movies you see in the theater. Right. So. Well, I mean, maybe not the ones you see in the theater, <laughs> but about 20% of the movies that, that are made. With, yeah. That's true. All right, hey, uh, let's go check out a shit show title at rmp.showbot.tv.